Hello and welcome to my channel. I'm your host Edgar and today we're going to take a look at a really cool looking knife. This is the Cold Steel Golden Eye. This is the elite version because it has carbon fiber uh, scales instead of green G10 as you can see on the picture on the box. So when they made this uh, new knife they didn't make new boxes to go with it so the specs on here are a little bit off. We'll go through that. Uh, but what they did was they put a, a label on the end of it to show that it is in fact the Elite. And this is all authentic. Be careful, there's some fakes I've heard out there, certain ones. Uh, but this is not one of them. This came from an authorized dealer. Plus you can tell by the fit and finish. I went through the whole knife and it's uh, exceptional fit and finish. Really a nice knife. So um, here is the Golden Eye logo. Very nicely done. There's the Eye of the Golden Eye name. I think that's really cool. A lot of people don't like the billboarding here. You know, the product placement, as it were, reminiscent of a 007. Uh, that's one of the things that really uh, drew me to it. The unique brass colored thumb ramp, carbon fiber scales, just exceptionally beautiful, uh, beautiful knife. One of the reasons I got this is because of that. It, it was the name, it was the golden eye, and it was that exceptionally beautiful blade it's one of the nicest uh, blades i've ever seen a drop point but not too uh droppy where it's still um if you're going to do any kind of a thrusting or stabbing motion for whatever you're working on uh, it's right in line with the ergonomics of your hand look at that gorgeous deep hollow ground grind and it's got two different satin finishes it's got the vertical ones there Let's see if we can see that look at that beautiful satin finish it's just exceptionally well done and it's no wonder this is from the taiwan factory um and don't let when you hear taiwan this does not mean china or chief factory in china taiwan is a separate country as you know and here we have the horizontal satin right along the top here up into the swedge you can see the grain right there going horizontally compared to vertically on the hollow ground portion of that blade and this is a real slicer this thing goes through cardboard and paper just like nothing it's just unbelievable and and well it should because this is a thin handle so if it was too much force needed to really cut through things you're going to feel uh, pressure and hot spots because of that thin uh, hard handle the actual um, cutting edge is uh, even and nicely done as well uh, getting back to the Taiwan factory, yeah, the Taiwan factory is a really good one. So is the Spyderco one. Um, don't ever let that throw you off because uh, they have some of the nicest, in my in my view, they have some of the nicest knife factories in the world. My solder, I wish I never sold it. They, they're really commanding a high price now. Uh, but the Spyderco solder is a titanium flipper made in Taiwan. That was one of my first Taiwan knives, and I was blown away by the quality. It was easily like a three or three hundred fifty dollar knife. It was just unbelievable. Can't wait to get one again. All right, so let's go through the specs on this. Um, this knife is a three point five inch blade, hollow ground, as I mentioned. The overall lens is about eight point four inches long. 4.9 inches closed so it's a full size handle it's almost five inches and then the thickness is about 0.4 inches or about 10 millimeters so the standard i think people try to get half inch or less so this fits into that um, but it is on the thin side and it has a really nice matte finish carbon so not sort of a cheap really shiny but some shiny carbon glossy carbon fiber looks really beautiful too uh, but this is a little bit more grippy than the really polished carbon fiber. So this way it doesn't slip too much in your hand because it's already sort of slabby, big slabs there without any uh, texture on it. But it, it is a little bit more grippy than the shiny one. You have finger grooves on the grip. And it fits pretty well. There's no hot spots. It fits perfectly. My fingers into those grooves. I have, I have large size hands, not extra large, just right at large. And you can see there's a little bit sticking out in the end over here and your thumb naturally goes right on this ramp here which is non-jim there's no jimping whatsoever there's jimping here in the carbon fiber a little bit lower 
so that helps too but there, there's none right on here and that's okay because in my in my view if they did have jimping it would be so sharp it would hurt your finger because that's one of the cons of this knife we'll go over that when we get to that portion of the ugly and it is ugly um, and then a few cons that are just maybe nitpicky and, and maybe bad so we got a little of everything on this knife so we're looking forward to that gorgeous swedge look at that swedge on the blade this is 35 vn let's take a look at the other side here and we have nicely you know nicely done fonts nicely done printing it's probably laser etched and then burned in s35 vn made in tuan as mentioned cold steel and here we have the thumb ramp as you can see there are steps this is gold I mean, yeah, gold. No, we wish it was gold plating. This is brass plated steel. I'm guessing it's steel. I know there's people called the, the factory and he said, yeah, it is indeed brass plating, but they didn't mention if it was steel or not. I have to guess it's steel, not some pop metal or something else, but it's not going to be the S35N. You almost never see that uh, when they put liners and so forth. Uh, it's a 440 or something like that. They're not going to use their premium steel for everything on the knife, uh, with the exception of the knife I'm getting today. I'm getting um, a, a Caribbean Spider Co. That's everything is uh, 200 steel throughout, which is anti salt and anti corrosion steel. Um, this insert here, it has a little keyway. This way it doesn't rotate right there. As you can see that. And that's where you can push it out, and it is held in by the set screw. And that's a very small Allen. So if you have a small Allen like I do, and anytime I get little devices with set screws and things like that, I keep my Allens, and a lot of them are miniature, and that'll fit in there nicely. <clears throat> yeah, really nice. So this is a triad lock, their name, and extra security, extra lockup, the triad on the conventional lockback knife. So you push this down. And the blade is going to release. I don't recommend you doing it uh, one-handed because if that thing ever came down, it's going to hit your hand. There's no way to push this and not have your fingers where the blade's coming down. So you got to be really careful of that, especially when it breaks in and gets a lot looser. Uh, but it is a lockback, so what happens is there's a lot of pressure on that blade. This isn't a this isn't a um, flicking knife. You can sit all day flicking it like you do with other locks. Um, you just use your thumb and rotate it. I've seen some people on YouTube try to flick it open, and you can if you really flick your wrist. I don't do that on any of my knives. I use my thumb or fingers to deploy the blade even fast. I'll show you that in a minute. Um, but people said that their fingers are raw from, you know, pushing on this and flicking it open and trying to do it with their thumb. Uh, but this is sharp. That's one of the cons of this knife. This is, those steps are, are barely radius at all, so they're very sharp. Uh, it helps to grab the finger and go like this, which is fine. But if you were going to do that, you know, all day long, open and close, open and close, uh, your hand's going to be chewed up, your finger's going to be chewed up. There's other reasons that your entire hand is going to have a problem. We'll get to that on the ugly. Uh, but just suffice it to say now that this is not very comfortable. If you go like this a couple times a day, it'll be fine. It's ambidextrous. You can do it on this side as well. This whole knife is ambidextrous. And it has um, the clip is tip up. Left or right. So that's really nice. Something for everybody here. No problem there. Uh, but you're not going to be you know, going like this. So this is a, a one-hand opening, if not fast, and two-hand close. I mean, you could possibly go like this, drop it down, turn your hand around and grab it, get your fingers out of the way. And you can do that, but it is, it is fiddly. You know, it's not uh, that easy to do, unlike the typical access lock. So here's uh, one of my Griptilians. I'm a big Griptilian fan. Here's one in G10, those gorgeous blue backspacers. Um, but it's one hand open. You just take it out of your pocket, boom, you open it, and you cut your boxes, take the, um, the access lock and just do that. I mean, so fast, boom, boom, in out of the pocket. Uh, or if, you're, if you just want to fiddle with it, you could also pull the access lock back and just go like that and close it. You know, that's no problem. Here we have a O220 Anzo titanium flipper. This is one of my bigger ZTs. I have a 450 as well for left pocket carry. This is, I love this knife. This is really nice. We're on the same size as your, um, you know, 562 and so forth of the ZTs. Same thing, take it out of your pocket 
hit the flipper deployment tab and you're good to go for closing it you push the little lock down go like that it can't go anywhere your thumbs in the way then you could reach up and go like that a little bit more awkward i'm looking through the camera trying to do this so it's like watching tv with my hands uh, disembodied from myself uh, but yeah that's really easy to do so here's another uh, one hand deployment and then we have uh, pm2 paramilitary 2 Custom Orange Scales. I'll put who makes this and the specs on this and the show notes. Make sure you look at the show notes. Isn't that gorgeous honeycomb pattern, huh? So this you can deploy, you know, with a regular thumb opening. This is a compression lock. You can go like that all the way down. Or you could use your hand to finish it. Um, or you can go like this, middle finger. I just learned how to do that and I love it. It's so much fun to do that. But yeah, this one hand, you could do it all the way as well. So let's open that again. Then you can go like that down one hand. Uh, this does not do that. So that's one of the cons. It's You need two hands to, to go through that. You can take this knife apart, which is really nice. One of the pluses there, you've got a T10 Torx for the pivot. And then the only other screw would be this one right here, which is T6. And then on this side, you have another screw, which goes through to another part of the lock. The triad lock goes right through here. This does not have full liners. The, um, the mechanism for the triad lock goes like this and continues and that's it. Everything else is uh, bare carbon fiber. Likewise, this right here, there's no extra reinforcing whatsoever, but this fiber, uh, carbon fiber is extremely thick for its size. You got carbon fiber backspacer here. So it's closed construction. You have to spray it out if it ever gets gunk in there and that sort of thing. Uh, there's the lock in the back. And there are no liners in there. I don't know if we can get enough light to see that. But yeah, there's no liners. A lot of cold steel knives don't have liners. And they have really strong G10 or carbon fiber and plenty enough support. The only time you run across a problem with non-liners is if you ever do batoning, which you shouldn't be doing, or you put any kind of stress right here, prying, that sort of thing, you're putting a lot of stress on the hole here that holds the, um, the washers. So this one here has uh, phosphor bronze and uh, plastic. I guess it's a nylon. A lot of people don't like that, but I guess Spyderco believes that right out of the box it's going to be smooth, no breaking period, and they don't like the way phosphor bronze uh, wears in. Rest of the dimensions, it's about 1.6 inches from here to here, so it's rather wide in the pocket. But it is very flat, so very comfortable there. The pocket clip. Uh, let's see here on the pocket clip when you hold it. No hot spots whatsoever. Really well done on that pocket clip. I give it a big thumbs up. It's all radius. Nothing here is sharp. Uh, very comfortable. It's uh, it's not deep carry. You could probably get a clip there where you can deep carry that. But I don't have a problem with it. A lanyard hole goes right through through construction on the clip. Very nice design. It's gorgeous. I love that. They did a really good job there. Unlike, you know, the, the PM3, I mean, the Para-3, the para where they put that, that clip below the hole. So they didn't do that here. They did a really good job on, on the clip. Big thumbs up there. Let's see if I forgot anything else here. Yeah. Went through all the dimensions and everything. All right. So let's get to the nitpicks and the bad and the and outright ugly. So the biggest problem I have with this with this knife is that as soon as I picked it up, I'm like, oh, that's an uncomfortable handle. And, and it really is. And the reason for it is that everything is sharp. As, as well made as this knife is and how gorgeous it is and how well put together it is, I give it a big thumbs up for production value. It's just incredible. The materials are top notch. The machining is top notch. The, the, there's like no flaws anywhere. The blade is absolutely impeccably gorgeous. But what they didn't do, and I think this is a lot of cold, uh, cold steel knives, are like, like the Code 4, a lot of knives are like this. The Code 4 are the same thing. I'm hearing sharp edges. But I watched a lot of reviews in this. And nobody's mar uh, mentioning the sharp edges, and I don't get it. Because as soon as you pick it up, 
uh, to me, it feels very uncomfortable. For one thing, the carbon fiber, 90 degree angles. They never knock the edge off. I had the same problem with my SOG. I think it was called Covert or Aegis maybe, um, but it was their version of the, of the access lock. And the same thing, right inside here, it was sharper than anything. So any kind of, when you grab it, any kind of lateral movement, uh, where your fingers are moving this way, you can hear that. 90 degree angle, it is really sharp. That's an easy fix um, on my, uh, and this was uh, some kind of polymer on my uh, SOG knife. I just take a, a really sharp knife and I just, I don't, you don't you go blade forward. You drag it across the edge, you drag it across the edge and it just knocks that edge off. If, I, if I'm going to keep this knife, I'll do that. I'm going to go through and just knock the edge all the way off and then you're good to go. So that's a fixable thing. The other thing that's sharp is uh, right here. They radius the, a tiny bit on the lock. This lock is so strong, you need so much pressure to put down that because the lock uh, back here is narrow <clears throat> and the lock is so strong and it takes so much pressure to push it, um, if you were going to do that all day or, or more than a couple of times a day, man, and it really hurts my thumb pushing on that. In addition to, to it, they didn't radius it too much. They probably didn't want to make it any thinner, but they did radius it here a little bit. So that does help a lot, but still it's the pressure pushing on it. So that kind of hurts. So the whole, the whole knife hurts. To me, a blade should be sharp, but nothing else in the knife should be sharp. So I'm kind of disappointed in that big time that everything feels sharp um, when the clip is fine. Um, but this right here, it hurts when I push it because um, I pushed it a lot of times in a day and yeah, any more than five times, man, it's going to start hurting your thumb. Uh, the other thing, too, is the ramp, and that is just bad. I mean, if you do it two or three times a day, there's no problem. But if you're going to open boxes and use this all day, it's not going to work in my mind. Uh, for one thing, this brass plating just comes right off. It becomes silver. So then your golden eye isn't there anymore. Where's the golden eye if you rub this off and it's now silver? So I guess that stainless steel under there. Their brass plating is it not that good. I've seen a lot of these with silver on videos. Uh, the clip, I have to guess, might do the same thing. I'm not sure. I can't say because that could be a different plating or maybe it took better on here. Uh, but <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> but uh, gold PVD would have been much better. More expensive, but that would last so much longer uh, than the brass plating on here. But look at those steps. They didn't, I mean, they didn't really knock much of the edge off. Every one of those steps is sharp. So that feels sharp. The carbon fiber feels sharp. Up here, the carbon fiber, like in your pocket and everything, this is sharper than anything, the whole thing. That would have to be radiused off for me to keep that and use it. The other thing that's sharp is the metal right here. No beveling whatsoever. Look at that sharp edge. That's 90 degrees. This is sharper than anything. And this is going to be sitting in your pocket, uh, ripping it up and, and scratching or doing whatever right here from here to here this is gorgeous and re really well done i think they should have came up and done the whole thing but that is sharper than anything i guess if you got to do a fire steel but i don't see that happening we're going to use a fire steel that would be perfect for that but that's sharp too so that's the cons man uh the the the, the knife is narrow which is very comfortable in the pocket but when you go to use the, the knife, if you put any pressure whatsoever, like all day on this, then that is thin. Any kind of, anytime you have a thin knife, you don't use it that much. Because if you're going to put a lot of pressure cutting things, then you got uh, the thin handles that don't distribute that force very well. So I think that's about it. I could re recommend this knife to people that love to collect knives. They love the Golden Eye logo. They love the 007 uh, tie-in. They, they like the design of the blade, the S35VN. They love carbon fiber. Then I highly recommend it. However, if you're sensitive to sharp objects in your hand, if you don't like discomfort, if you don't like pushing a lot of pressure, if you don't like the two-hand closing, so you can kind of go like this. I guess after it breaks in, maybe. I don't think so. That thing is so strong. So highly recommend it for people that love the design and collect it. It's not going to use it that much. But if you want a big user... I don't recommend it. And I got to decide if I'm going to keep this bad boy. So really nice knife, but uh, a lot of those things, I think it's going to make it a no-go for me here. Thanks so much for watch watching. Please like and subscribe and hit that bell notification to be notified of I'm doing a, a lot of knives. I, gotta, I think I got 15 knives I'm going to be reviewing soon uh, one by one. 
hopefully it won't be as long as this one. I was hoping this was going to be a quick review, but maybe next time. But I try to give you as many details because we can't go into stores anymore, what's going on. Plus, the knives I want don't have at my local knife store. You know, there's just too many variety. They can't carry everything. So you don't get to handle them anymore. So the more that I can put in my video on what you're going to experience without... Like if I would have held it in the store, I probably wouldn't have bought it because the whole thing would have been sharp. So I try to give you everything I can ascertain about a knife to get, make you better informed so you don't go buy knives you're not going to be happy with. So anyway, thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you next time. Take care.